Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com. From St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. I'm Jason Rosenbaum. A nonprofit group is dispatching social workers to de escalate problems on Metro's public transit services. And so far, Chestnut Health is seeing promising results. Since April 2021, Chestnut Help Health helped 177 riders get connected to services. Staff also provided 68 backpacks and tote bags with resources. And they helped distribute 71 boxes of Narcan to riders during quarterly outreach events. Since, since late last year, the program has been ramping up in St. Louis and St. Louis County. Joining us today in studio to talk about this program is Jim Wallace, Chestnut Health Director of Business Development, who is overseeing the expansion of the pilot program. Jim, welcome to St. Louis on the Air. Thank you, Jason, for having me. And joining us remotely is Emily Schweigel, Chestnut Health Behavioral Health Outreach Coordinator. She is the MetroLink Project Coordinator. Emily, welcome to St. Louis on the Air. Thank you. It's great to be here. Jim, tell me about what this program is and what it's trying to accomplish. Well, it's a, it's a project that uh, really started over in St. Clair uh, County with the St. Clair County Transit District. Uh, really, um, with the Metrolink, which has been around since 1993, when there's issues or problems uh, that have occurred on the train uh, or on the transit system, um, that's usually looked at from a law enforcement or security standpoint. So really the forward thinking uh, uh, of the St. Clair County Transit District was to um, find funding to uh, get social workers and uh, individuals with clinical backgrounds to address some of those issues that maybe aren't best approached by a security or law enforcement standpoint, uh, connecting people in need with um, appropriate services. And that's really how it started. And why do you think Metro was interested in having social workers work with them? And why did they want to have this program expand in St. Louis and St. Louis County? Well, um, you know, I kind of, from afar, uh, as my focus is on our Missouri programming, watched as the St. Clair County Transit District reached out to Chestnut over in Illinois. They've seen a lot of uh, all-day riders, individuals that maybe have mental health. They've seen substance use issues that were uh, happening on the train line over in Illinois and uh, really made it happen, had some conversations. Their board approved uh, the project and uh, from afar in Missouri immediately started working with my partners at Bi-State um, how can we duplicate and mirror this program? Because there's a need to look with a different lens uh, um, and, uh, tr and to make it happen on the Missouri side. And that's just what we did. Emily, when this pilot program began in St. Clair County in 2021, you were part of a two-person team of outreach workers riding trains and buses. What did you learn during the first stage of that program? Well, yeah, so it was um, a two-person team alongside us was a transit security specialist and the ambassadors within the county. And so there really wasn't ever a project like this. So we were just kind of learning along the way what our approach was, what was the most effective practices in engaging with individuals on just a casual basis, in a crisis situation, how to connect them to those services, and really building those partnerships with external agencies as well. So it was really I mean, the whole thing was really just a learning process. And Emily, can you take us through a regular day for these outreach workers? Where are they going and what sort of interactions are they having? Yeah, so based on the zone, um, it depends on if the team is mobile on the train or if they are posted at an actual station. And so during their shift time, they're really paying attention to the riders and just any behaviors or warning signs that may suggest a behavioral health need. So substance use, mental health, housing, very minor medical, um, or really just anybody who may need a resource in general. And so each individual has their own approach on how they strike up a conversation. Sometimes the individual is very apparent that they might be in need of a service, and sometimes it is not. 
And so they are engaging with this individual, striking up conversation, asking very directed questions to really try to capture everything that's going on with that rider and then discussing what kind of services and resources are available, what they can do to help connect them, and then really just trying to problem solve. And sometimes that individual is ready at that time to sit down, get an appointment scheduled, maybe be, be transported to the service provider. And then sometimes it's just giving them a business card, um, a card with some resources on it, maybe a bottle of water. In Illinois, Emily, your outreach workers are riding trains to connect with riders. But in St. Louis, those workers are stationed at transit hubs at the Civic Center in downtown St. Louis and at the North Hanley Center in uh, St. Louis County. What accounts for the difference in, in areas of deployment? So one of the things that we were really focusing on is those two major hubs in St. Louis. There's a lot more alignment in Missouri than there is in Illinois. So we wanted to really make sure that with the manpower that we have, that we were being as effective as possible. And so in Illinois, two people are able to cover that alignment. Um, With us being in year two, we are able to expand to cover more hours of the day. In Missouri, we really wanted to focus on those two stations because there is a lot of buses that also come through there. So there's a lot of foot traffic with the goal that eventually we'll be able to expand, maybe get on the alignment, maybe cover some more stations. And and Jim, you kind of alluded to this already, but can you give us some like specific examples and and situations that Chestnut's behavioral specialists are responding to on a daily day-to-day basis? Sure. And I think Emily can give some real life examples, but I know we've had uh, substance use issues, uh, overdoses. Our civic center location, which uh, uh, Emily alluded to, is really uh, busy uh, with the the Amtrak station there uh, right across from Enterprise Center, uh, buses and trains. There's always something going on. Uh, but I know they've addressed uh, mental health. Uh, and then if, if you look at the stats that we're keeping, especially across the boards in St. Clair and in Missouri, our unhoused neighbors, uh, the folks that need housing support services, those are really our, our uh, biggest um, in, in terms of uh, individuals in need and connecting with services. Emily, if you want to expound upon that, what sort of other things are you seeing? Yeah, so um, our main thing that we are really um, addressing is the unhoused population, uh, followed by substance use and mental health. Um, and a lot of that is you know, we, our team administers Narcan. We provide Narcan to individuals so they have that in cases needed at a different time. We do have the funds that allow us to buy supplies that allow us to provide, you know, socks, um, hygiene kits, maybe some first aid kits to individuals, things along those lines. And so it's really an array of individuals with, you know, those different needs throughout the day. But the primary things we are seeing is unhoused, substance use, and mental health. And then depending on what area um, varies, in Illinois, we do see a lot of those who are unhoused. That's probably our primary need that we are addressing. As for Missouri, you will see that those numbers, when we're looking at that data, is more substance use. And Emily, can you describe what techniques or strategies somebody from your, your team would use if you encounter something that is a problem and that could be a very volatile situation and how you de-escalate it before it spirals out of control. So our team um, goes through a very comprehensive training plan whenever they begin this position. And so we go through a lot of de-escalation, a lot of crisis intervention trainings. And so that team, each individual has a very specific skill set on how to address an individual who is maybe in a crisis situation, maybe very symptomatic of mental health, and how to potentially de-escalate that situation so they can, you know, try to address the issue. However, each team does have a transit security specialist embedded with them there for safety. And then along the alignment, there is additional TSS, there is an additional security contracted company and law enforcement that is also present. And so if it is a situation that we are unable to address with our skill set and it has become more of a safety, then we do have that support to make sure that everyone involved is safe and secure. Yeah. And and if you are entering a situation where you cannot de-escalate it, no matter how much you try, is Metro Security able to handle it from there? Like, what's the experience been like on your end? So we've had an excellent experience so far. And the TSS that are assigned and embedded with our teams have, I cannot compliment them enough. They have been the right people for the job. 
they are also trained in de-escalation skills as well. And so they have offered a great amount of support when we have needed them, and they've been able to de-escalate situations that maybe we haven't been able to. And so what we have seen is that our team has worked very well with our TSS to serve the riders in a very effective way. Jim, we mentioned some statistics about how this program has gone in St. Clair County. I, I know you don't have like hard and fast statistics about the city and the county, but what have been what's been the impact you've seen so far in St. Louis and St. Louis County since the program began in late 2021? Yeah, so in St. Clair, April of 2021, uh, we launched, uh, we did a uh, soft launch of our Civic Center program uh, in the city uh, in February of this year and then at North Hanley in March. And so I think we're in the learning phase uh, with bringing the experience across the water from St. Clair um, in terms of uh, what um, interactions we're having, what the populations are. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, um, initially we were static at both uh, Civic Center and North Hanley, but as we evolve, as we learn, and as we have our conversations with our leadership uh, at Bi State Metro uh, and the Metro Link uh, program, we've learned, and this is just an example at the North Hanley station, we've seen high volume in the morning, high volume uh, later in the afternoon, uh, but it's really a lot slower there during the day. So our, our team now, I think as of mid-June, is riding the transit down to Forest Park and back and getting off and having interactions at different platforms. Um, so we're evolving this. Um, and collect, again, Emily and her team's doing a great job collecting the data, um, what we need to uh, do moving forward to tell that story, to uh, make a better, bigger collective impact is is uh, have all of that data in hand that shows uh, that tells the story of what's happening with these individuals, and I think that's the big key here uh, moving forward. So Chestnut Health CEO David Shurar 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 yeah. uh -huh. said that your organization's efforts dovetail with a broader concern about safety on metros, buses, and trains. I'm going to read a quote from him. The idea is to really move away from what historically might have been more of a policing or code enforcement response to a humane offer of assistance and having a sensitive conversation with individuals who might be in distress and trying to engage them or motivate them to do something different. Would you say that you've been able to meet that aspiration within that quote thus far? Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I heard this. I didn't uh, make it up myself. I heard this on NPR um, not too long ago, um, that when individuals call 911, they're not necessarily necessarily calling for a law enforcement or security response. They're calling for help. And what does that help look like? Um, prior to this project on the Metro Transit system, it was a law enforcement or security response. But a lot of times we can respond with that clinical connection, having the relationships with other not-for-profits, housing, substance use, mental health, workforce development, and giving them a warm connect to those services. So that's really what we've done. Uh, and there's been high interest in the area. Uh, I cannot, in 33 years of working in the business, um, how, how interested individuals are in the area, as well as outside of the area looking in about this project. And this entire conversation comes with, with a broader talk about enhancing safety mm -hmm. for, for Metro. Um, how do you think that that plays or goes hand in hand with M Metro's desire to make sure that the trains and buses are as safe they, as they can be? Well, I think that we're a piece of the uh, puzzle, um, and there's a lot of pieces of that puzzle. And uh, the, the individuals uh, running uh, by state, whether it's Talby Roach or Kevin Scott, the director of Metro Transit Security in St. Clair um, in the transit district over there, they're looking at a lot of th things, and they're kind of looking at it from the uh, they see the forest in spite of the tree. We're one of the trees that are one of the solutions, and I think it's going very well right now. But, again, we... Uh, meet on a regular basis to see how we evolve and tweak, and uh, that's what we're doing. Emily, what do you think that this program does to change the perception and the reality about the region's public transportation safety? I mean, I think that if you ride public transit, you do see a population of individuals who are riding that train all day um, because that is their safe place, and there are a lot of other needs going on in their life, and having our teams out there help provide solutions 
or at least try to connect them to the services to provide solutions to those needs so they are not on the system all day or all the platforms are on the property all day. And so I think it just allows people or gives a, you know, shows that there are individuals out there who are there to help those in need and that there's a working effort to be very proactive in all of these situations and not, you know, using that criminal justice standpoint to try to just, you know, react to those situations that we're really just trying to problem solve and make it a safer environment for all the riders and staff. And so far funding from, has come from by state is if this program is to expand Jim where will additional money come from so yeah um, so far with the uh, St. Clair Transit District and by state they've provided our seed funding for this proof of concept uh, but we're immediately again collecting that data to tell the story so we have a we have a federal grant that we'll know in about 30 days if we get that funded uh, it's an expansion grant that will add a whole nother team so we're very much uh, two staff on each of these platforms were very much at the tip of the iceberg. Um, um, but to complement something that Emily said, um, we look at mental health as a public health crisis. So it could be these people in high need and have emergency situations, or it could be our vision is somebody just having a bad day that has somebody to talk to with a clinical lens. We're talking with Jim Wallace and Emily Schweigel of Chestnut Health about a pilot program that's putting health specialists on Metro Transit. It, Jim, do you think that there are enough organizations like yours to expand this program beyond what we have now? In other words, could we possibly have a situation where we have even more social workers working in St. Louis, St. Louis County and St. Clair County? Absolutely. And uh, one of my jobs in being in the field for so long is to collaborate and build strong working relationships. So Emily and her team, you know, our partnership with this federal grant that we've got that we're waiting back on results. Uh, uh, we've got a Fathers and Family Support Center, Assisted Recovery Centers of America, which addresses uh, substance use, St. Patrick's Center uh, with the unhoused. Uh, we're all partnering, and I think to make that bigger, better collective impact, you have to not uh, run in a silo. You have to work uh, uh, well together. And so I think there's lots of opportunity moving forward um, to make that collective impact. Emily, I mentioned on the outset that it, since April 2021, uh, your organization helped 177 riders in St. Clair County get connected to services. Are, are you finding that people that clearly need some sort of services are receptive to actually going to those services? Um, yes and no. Work, I come from a clinical background, and so one of the things that I'm very aware of and that the team, you know, as part of their comprehensive training plan is the stages of change and just meeting individuals where they are. And so sometimes you engage with somebody and they are ready. They, they are aware of the needs and they are ready to utilize the resources available. And then sometimes it takes a little more time to build that rapport because you see a lot of the same individuals out here on the transit system. So sometimes it takes a little bit of time for them to, to build that trust and for them to get to know you a little bit and feel comfortable. And sometimes it's just, you know, they accept a water one time, they accept your business card the next time, they start asking more questions. And so it's really just about accepting individuals for where they are, meeting them there, and then assisting them with whatever acceptance and resources that they are wanting at that time. And do you think that the people that are receptive are receptive because they're being approached by social workers and, you know, alongside security people and not just security personnel? Um, I, th I think it can go both ways. I think that it just it takes some time. I think it can be a little intimidating if somebody in a uniform is approaching you. And we were very strategic with our team with what we wear. So we wear a T-shirt with just our company's logo and jeans. So enough for us to stand out, um, enough for us to blend in. So it is more casual when we approach them, and it's not more like we're approaching them with a purpose. And so I think it's all about our approach, the way we present ourselves, and just the overall environment that we are trying to create. Um, Jim, we only have a couple of minutes left, but when I was mentioning about expansion, and this is just an idea of knowing about the higher education infrastructure here, is it possible that maybe you could get local higher education institutions involved with this? Like maybe newly graduated social workers from Washington University or another higher institution to be involved with this type of program. Absolutely, and that's a great thought. And if you think about it, um, 
the the transit system, the Metrolink uh, from North Hanley down to Civic uh, Center goes right through the University of Missouri St. Louis campus, uh, Wash U, St. Louis U. We've had conversations. I think the job that uh, we have at task and it's more of my role and my um, my partner at Metro Security uh, uh, by State Metro is getting people on the train and seeing it in real life and uh, we just recently had uh, the Missouri Chamber leadership Missouri 40 people from across the state of Missouri um, ride the train uh, meet with our staff down at Civic Center and we couldn't get those people uh, individuals back on the train. They were so interested in what we had to do. So being able to build those connections and relationships with higher ed uh, is uh, first and foremost on our agenda. Jim Wallace is Chestnut Health's Director of Business Development and is overseeing the expansion of this pilot program. Jim, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And Emily Schweigel is Chestnut Health's Behavioral Health Outreach Coordinator and is the Metro Project Coordinator Emily, thank you so much for sharing your perspective on the show today. Thank you for having me. We need to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll discuss how a St. Louis County higher education institution will be the home base for a high-stakes para powerlifting competition next month. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thanks. Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry, Choosewood.com.